I'm Robert Coles. And I'm Richard Simpson. And today we're going to start a six-part series where we're going to provide you with information on Stalin, one of the most evil figures in history. And not only are we going to look at the man who was Stalin, we're going to look at the myth who was Stalin, because there are two. There is the myth that was Stalin, then there is the man. And then we're also going to cover something that I find to be troubling. And that is how even in the modern day, there are people who are rewriting and adding to the myth that was Stalin. Yosef Stalinovich Stalin was born with the name Jugashvili in the Russian controlled territory of Georgia in the town of Gori. His parents, Esaran Jigashvili and Ekaterin Galedze, were ethnically Georgian, and Stalin natively spoke the Georgian language. He was the only one of his parents' children who survived past infancy, and he was doted upon by his parent, his mother. His father was a shoemaker and owned his own workshop, and when he, he didn't keep up with the latest fashions in shoes, they proceeded to fall into poverty as his shoemaking business failed. Stalin's life as a young lad was a hard one. His life, his family was in poverty. His father drank too much, was a little bit abusive. But his mother, during his younger years, was his saving grace. And then, as Stalin got older, his mother sent him to seminary, where Stalin would get good grades. He'd become a published poet, but then he started to rebel. And he'd find himself locked away in a cell for his rebellious antics. One time he was seen storming away from prayer, professing to be an atheist. Yosef learned about revolutionary writings and such while he was in seminary. His mother was a devout Orthodox and he, she wanted the, only the best for her son. And Yosef found himself in what was considered the Forbidden Book Club. He would be reading books that were actually banned in the entire Russian Empire. And keep in mind, at the time, Georgia was not a separate state or a separate republic. It was part of the Russian Empire. He would find himself leaving seminary in April of 1899, never having finished his training, and he never looked back. When he, six months later, he found himself back in Tiflis in Georgia, working as a meteorologist. But then he was also planning things like mass meetings for workers and strikes and stuff like this that brought him to the attention of the Yochrana, or the Russian secret police. Stalin would find himself in disfavor, and Stalin would be sent to a place where he would send many to die when he became leader. Stalin himself was sent in exile in 1903, sent to the very place in Siberia where he would send millions to die. However, for Stalin, he tried to escape twice. He was successful the second time, escaping the fate that he would condemn many others to. After his escape in 1904, January, he returned to Tiflis. He began to edit a Marxist newspaper in Georgian, The Proletarian Struggle. He went so far as to advocate the separation of the Marxist parties in Russia and in Georgia, um, which 
caused no doubt many rumblings in the Russian Marxist party to the extent where they were going to exile him from the party. He later backed off of these beliefs. Um, but uh, while he was in this flux, the two factions of the socialist party, the, those that would be later named the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, and the Mensheviks, led by Ulyas Martov. The Mensheviks would have control or the majority of the control in Georgia. The Bolsheviks would be the ones that Stalin would side with. And next week, we will start off with the massacre of St. Petersburg in 1905. I've been Robert Knowles. And I'm Richard Simpson. Thank you, and good night. Richard and I would like to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until we meet again another point in history, have a good day.